Direct external references are created when a feature in a part uses geometry directly from another part as a parent of that feature, such as a sketch plane, sketch references, dimensioning references, depth references, and so on. Let's take a look at the improper way to do it and then the proper way to do it. So here I have a cable grip assembly and it's got a main support subassembly, a cable part, and a clamp lever assembly. I'm going to start off by activating this subassembly and creating a component in there. And let's say I'm designing a cover and click OK. And we will use our existing start part. And I'm just going to use the default constraint to locate it relative to the default datum planes of the assembly. So here's my cover part that I just created. I can activate it. And let's say I need to create a feature like an extrude. I can click the extrude button. And if I select a surface from another part, there I'm making a direct external reference. And if I use, say, the project command to grab, grab some other references in here for what I'm designing, again, I'm making these direct external references. And this is the improper way to do it. And let me just exit out of here and cancel. So that's how you should not do it. Let's take a look at the way that you should do it. Let's activate our subassembly. Now in here, I'm going to create a skeleton model. And I will leave the default name. That's fine. And I'll click OK. And I'm going to use my default start part. And it's automatically located as the first component in the assembly. And then I can start creating my reference geometry from the higher level assembly that I need. I can activate the skeleton. And for simplicity, I'm going to create a shrink wrap feature. And I'm going to use the subset button because I want to ignore the assembly which contains the skeleton. And I'm just going to leave the rest of the components. Let's click the open button over there. And I prefer the method auto collect all solid surfaces. No, I'm not going to exclude components. And as always, a good practice is to rename the feature. And I like to rename it with the name of the assembly that it's referencing. In SW, that's my code for shrink wrap. So I will hit the check mark. The shrink wrap feature is being generated. Let's open up the subassembly in its own separate window. And it looks like the other assembly because I have that shrink wrap feature in the skeleton. If I hide all the other components from the assembly, again, it looks like the components from the rest of the higher level assembly because of that shrink wrap feature that I have inside of the skeleton. And now what I can do is I can activate the cover part. And inside of here, I could create a reference like a copy geometry feature to grab the surfaces that I need. So for example, I'm going to query select to this quilt, hold down the control key, query select to the quilt for that component, and let's grab one more. Oops, missed it. Keep going past it. Stop clicking so fast, Dave. All right, so those are the surfaces that I need in my copy geometry feature. Again, it's always a good practice to rename the data sharing feature. And I'm going to call this CG for copy geometry. And this is referencing the clamp lever skeleton. And now I will hit the check mark. And if I open up the cover part in its own separate window, there I have the reference surfaces that I need for creating my extrude feature. And the extrude feature can reference the different surfaces from the copy geometry feature. And I'm going to cancel out of here. The reason that this method is preferred is because you have options like update control. You can turn off automatic update and change it to manual update or no dependency depending on your needs. I don't have a demonstration for part proliferation, so let me just explain it. Basically means that 
users will already reinvent the wheel in other words duplicate components that other users have already created and the reason that this is a problem is that you might have two components that are exactly the same but because they are under different names when you're going to do downstream processes like manufacturing or procurement or inventory you're going to duplicate the efforts there as well so for example if you have again two components that are exactly the same you'll probably end up with two different process plans or you'll have to procure them separately or you'll store them in different bins in your inventory system and a lot of times these happen when you have users that insist on having their own sandboxes or people give really bad names to parts uh, for example I've seen situations where people include the name of the project or which revision of the model is or the date or maybe their initials to identify that they're the ones who created it and another cause is by using the common name where you should have words that describe the part that don't make the part searchable or you don't have the parameters or attributes in the part that make them searchable as well in a system like Windchill. Also along the common names part, uh, when people use different abbreviations for things, it can make them difficult to search. For example, some people will use SHCS for socket head cap screw and maybe others don't know that you're using that abbreviation so they won't know to search on that term. The way that you can solve these issues, first and foremost, use libraries. Whether you're using libraries in Windchill or maybe you have a network folder that everyone has access to. Also, use proper naming conventions for both the number and the common name so that people can search for those components. And if you have Windchill, you could consider a part classification system that will help users navigate through to locate components that they could reuse in their models. McMaster Car is a wonderful resource for components and Part of the problem is that they make it too easy as a resource to get components. So for example, let's say that I'm looking for a fastener and I want to get a socket head cap screw and let's grab the next level down and I want some mil spec alloy socket head cap screws and I'm just going to find one that I want. Let's use a 10-32 that is an inch long and here we see the product detail and if you scroll down over here you can see the component that you're going to get and you have a drop down list that you could use to change the format of the file that you want and I'm going to grab a step file and then save it. Alright I'm back in Creo Parametric let's create our new component and the part number for this was 92562A434 going to use my default template and now let's click get data and import and let me find where I stored that file and here's the step file and I'm going to import it let's hit the check mark and that way quickly and easily we have our component Here's the problem. McMaster car components just contain way too much detail. You can see all the threads that they have in here for this fastener. And then if I take a look at the hex head, again, that's way more geometry and detail than we need. And if I put a lot of these in my assembly models, then they're just going to be weighed down. So what you should do instead is create your own libraries of components or use the simplified components that you get in the integrated fastener, excuse me, intelligent fastener extension IFX. So here I have a simple assembly open and I want to put some fasteners in here to assemble the different plates together. So to use IFX, I'm going to go to the tools tab and then choose screw and we're going to locate on this cylindrical surface and I'll choose my placement surface for the screw head pick the bottom surface for the nut and then click OK and in the dialog box I can choose which catalog that I want to use for example instead of using millimeters maybe I want to use English units and I've got my hex bolt 
Let's choose that we want to set the length automatically so that it adjusts in here. It figured out the size of the fastener that I need and I could put a washer on both sides if I want to. Let's adjust the length of the fastener and eh, still a little short. Let's go and manually change it. There we go. That's what I want to use. And now I can click OK. And I'm just going to assemble a single instance and click OK. And so there we have our components in the model. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.